Hey what's up guys this is Vimal here and welcome back to TRHD. Today I'm back with a brand new PC build. I know you all have been waiting for this video since a long time. This is the H500P Ultimate RGB PC build. We'll be using the brand new Ryzen 5 2600X second gen CPU coupled with a GTX 1080 Ti. It's definitely an expensive PC as we'll be using all premium components. I can't wait to build it and see how awesome this PC will look like. So let's get started. These are the components we'll be using in today's build. I want to thank AMD, Asus and Cooler Master for sending me these products for review purpose. So in this video I'll be showing you how to build the PC step by step and we'll also cover the benchmarks and the gaming performance. So I hope you all will enjoy this video. To begin with, let me show you the CPU. We'll be using the brand new Ryzen 5 2600X second gen processor. It's a 6 core 12 thread CPU. Excellent processor for the price guys. You can see the CPU through the window here. Let me tell you its specs. The 2600X is a hexa-core 12 thread CPU, has a base clock frequency of 3.6 GHz and a max boost clock frequency of 4.2 GHz. Now this processor also comes with a stock cooler, it's called the Wraith Spire. Alright let's unbox it and check out the CPU. Here is our Ryzen 5 2600X, looks very nice, it's a brand new piece. Let me keep it aside and also show you the stock cooler. So here is our stock cooler, it's called the Wraith Spire. It's a simple cooler, but we won't be using this in today's build. We have a special liquid cooler for that. The motherboard we'll be using is ASUS Crosshair 7 Hero Gaming motherboard. It's an awesome MOBO, has an AM4 socket, built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, supports NVIDIA SLI, AMD Crossfire, and is also VR ready. This MOBO has some great features like Aura Sync support, M.2 heatsink, one-click overclocking solutions, and Supreme FX Audio. Let me unbox it and show you the motherboard. So this is how beautiful the Crosshair 7 Hero looks like. I'll mention all the pricing details at the end of this video. Coming to the graphics card, we are going extreme this time. I'll be using an ASUS Trix GTX 1080 Ti OC Edition. This is the most powerful graphics card I've used till now. It's got 11 GB of DDR5X memory, ASUS Aura Sync support, triple fan wing blade designed with 0dB fans, it is VR ready and also has Aura Sync lighting backplate. It's a very expensive graphics card, only the GPU costs around 1 lakh 10,000 rupees. The RAM we'll be using today is G-Skill Sniper X Extreme Performance DDR4 RAM made for gaming. We've got two RAM sticks over here, each of 8 gigs, so we'll be using a total of 16 GB of RAM. The Sniper X have an awesome looking camouflage design and are clocked at 3400 MHz. Talking about the cooler, we'll be using Cooler Master's Master Liquid ML120L RGB. It's an AIO liquid cooler that has RGB lighting which can be completely controlled with Aura Sync. It has a 120mm radiator, dual chamber pump and a silent air balance fan. Coming to the storage, we'll be using both hard disk and SSD here. The SSD we are using in today's build is Kingston's HyperX Fury 480GB SSD. It's a high performance entry level SSD, has a read and write speeds of 500mbps and is also reasonably priced. Along with the SSD, we'll be using a 2TB hard disk from WD. It's a 5400RPM hard disk, not that recommendable for gaming, but it's great for backing up your stuff. We'll be installing all the games and the OS on the HyperX Fury SSD, and the remaining stuff goes on the hard disk. The power supply we'll be using for this build is Cooler Master's MasterWatch 750. It's a semi-fanless modular 80 plus bronze certified PSU. It's a good power supply. I've already made a video on it, I'll just leave a link to that video in the card above. The 750W power supply is more than enough for this build. To make this build look even more beautiful, we'll be using special cable mod sleeved cables from Havoc Nation. Let me open the box and show you the cables. These sleeved cables give an awesome and neat look to your build. So in every box you get 4 of these extension cables, they come in variety of colors. You get one 24 pin cable for the motherboard, the quality of the cables is very nice and you also have these combs on them to hold the cables in their position and give a neat look. Along with that you get one 4 plus 4 pin cable and two more 6 plus 2 pin cables. These premium sleeved cables are compatible with most of the power supplies. And one more thing guys, if you buy a Cooler Masters PSU from Havoc Nation store, they ship these cables free with them. And finally coming to the PC case, we'll be using our brand new Cooler Masters H500P Mesh Edition. It is such a beautiful RGB PC case, I absolutely love it. It's got two massive 200mm RGB fans on the front, a mesh front panel for max air intake, it's liquid cooling ready and has a light grey tinted tempered glass panel on the side. So these are all the components we'll be using in today's build, let's get started with the assembling. First let's install the CPU on the motherboard. 
The MOBO has a name for socket. As you can observe, there are no pins on the socket. That's because in the case of AMD chips, the pins are on the CPU. Handle the processor gently as the pins can be very delicate and before placing the processor in the socket, always check and align the triangle mark on the processor with the engraved triangle on the socket. Now gently drop the CPU, just like this. You're done with the installation of the CPU, now lower down the lever to lock the CPU in its place. The next step we need to do is place the motherboard in the cabinet. The H500P is quite spacious, you can easily install all kinds of MOBOs. Just place the motherboard in the case and align it such that the fixing holes match with the holes on the motherboard. Once that's done, take some screws and start fixing the motherboard. Most of the MOBOs have 9 screw holes, go in a zigzag pattern and don't over tighten the screws. It's time to install the liquid cooler. We'll be installing this 120mm radiator at the back over here and the dual chamber pump will go on top of the CPU. First let's fix the radiator. Fixing the radiator is very easy. Just align the radiator properly so the holes on the radiator match with the holes on the cabinet. Then start fixing it with the help of some screws. And that's done. Now let me tell you how to install the dual chamber pump. But before placing it on top of the CPU, don't forget to apply some thermal paste on it. I've already applied thermal paste on my CPU, so I'll be skipping that part. Installing the pump is quite simple. You just need to place it on top of the CPU and hook the two metal brackets to the mount plate on the motherboard. After that, tighten up both the screws to fix the pump firmly. We are done with the installation of the liquid cooler. Now it's time to install the RAM sticks. We've got 4 RAM slots on this motherboard, A1, A2, B1 and B2. We'll be installing 2 8GB RAM sticks in the A2 and B2 slots. Before placing, always check for the notch. Put the RAM in the slot and push it hardly until the lever locks itself. In the same way, install the other RAM stick. It's time for the 1080 Ti to go in the cabinet. You need to install the graphics card in the PCI slot closest to the CPU, which is over here. Gently push the card in the slot and that's it. Now fix the GPU firmly to the metal bracket of the case with some screws. We are almost done with the assembling guys. The final thing left to do is install the power supply. First you need to fix the mount plate to the PSU that you get with the case. Now take all these cables to the other side so you can fix the PSU in the cabinet. Just tighten up the screws. And the only thing you're left with is connecting the cables. Alright guys, I've connected all the cables to the motherboard. So this is how our build looks from the inside. Those sleeved cables give an awesome look to our PC. And if you're wondering where I fixed the SSD and the hard disk, they're inside this shroud. This case has two drive bays here, that is where I fixed them. And this is how the other side of the cabinet looks like. Everything is neatly hidden under those covers. And here's a backside view of our build. We are finally done with assembling our 2600X Ultimate PC build. The only thing you need to do is install an OS and boot up the PC. So this is how beautiful our PC build looks like. All the RGB components are synced through ASUS Aura Sync and you can completely customize the lighting effects. Wow, this thing looks amazing guys, especially those two massive 200mm RGB fans on the front. Beautiful, it looks like eye candy to me. I've built a lot of PCs till now, but I think this is gonna be my new favorite of 2018. Just look at those awesome RGB lighting effects. Holy smokes, I'm in love with this PC. And this is the setup I'll be using for today. The monitor I'm using is ASUS ROG Swift PG27VQ. It's a 27 inch curved 165Hz overclockable 2K gaming monitor. It's an awesome gaming monitor and looks mesmerizing from all the angles. The keyboard and the mouse I'm using are from Cooler Master. Now let's check out the benchmarks. I've ran Geekbench 4, it got a single core score of 4491 and a multi core score of 20330 as expected from the 2600X. I have not overclocked anything, all benchmarks were done on stock settings. And in the OpenCL benchmark, it scored about 2,15,300. Nothing less expected from GTX 1080 Ti. It's a super powerful GPU. Now let's dive into the gaming performance. I'm playing all the games with this Xbox 360 controller. So let's start off with GTA 5. Let me show you the graphic settings. I'm playing the game at 1440p resolution, that is 2K. And as you can see, all the graphic settings are set to max. So let's play the game and see how it performs. Oh, man. The gameplay felt buttery smooth, 
GTA 5 was running flawlessly at 1440p max graphics settings. It's a beast PC guys, I was really enjoying playing games on it. On an average, I was easily getting around 70 frames per second at 1440p resolution. It can also handle games very easily at 4K, but since I didn't have a 4K monitor, I couldn't show that to you. Just check out the gameplay. Now let's play Final Fantasy 15. I'm playing this game at ultra graphic settings at 1440p resolution. Just check it out. Final Fantasy 15 is a very graphic intensive game. On an average, I was getting around 55 to 60 FPS in 1440p resolution. In 1080p, you'll easily get around 75 to 80 FPS. I've also played Just Cause 3. This game was running buttery smooth on the build. Just enjoy the gameplay. So that was my video on the Ryzen 5 2600X RGB PC build. It's an ultimate 1440p gaming beast and yes it can also handle games at 4K without any sweat. Let me summarize all the component prices for you. The Ryzen 5 2600X costs about 21,000 rupees. It's an amazing hexa-core processor for the price. The Asus Crosshair 7 Hero motherboard costs 40,000 rupees. The Asus Trix GTX 1080 Ti costs 1 lakh 10,000 rupees. The G Skill Sniper X 16GB RAM is priced for 27,000 rupees. The HyperX 480GB SSD costs 21,000 rupees and the WD 2TB hard disk is priced for 5,000 rupees. Cooler Masters MW750 costs 8,000 rupees and the ML120L liquid cooler is priced for 6,000 rupees. Coming to the case, the H500P mesh is available for 14,000 rupees and finally my monitor PG27VQ costs 93,000 rupees. So the total cost of this PC build setup comes down to 3,45,000 rupees. This is definitely an expensive and premium build, but trust me, after using this kind of PC, it's very hard to go back to the normal ones. This PC is that good in terms of both looks and performance. So that was my video on this new H500P PC build. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more new awesome videos. And I'll see you in the next one.